He said, I got on my hat today. This is his, uh, this is his cognac, the Portier, which is named after his grandmother out of Glenville, Georgia. So I want to represent uh, for the home team and also, too, for the Savannah State people that are listening, mm-hmm. that are looking. Hey, listen, get you some, get you this Le Portier mm-hmm. off the chain. So smooth. Mm-hmm. So, peace. <laughs> <laughs> Love the hair grease. Listen, I thought this was kind of cute. These cups. No, these ain't cups. Glasses, my man. <laughs> Correct me, but that motherfucker wrong. You know what I'm talking about? I'm going to have to tilt it to the side because I know y'all can't see it. Whoever you is, miss this. Huh? Whoever the missus is, he got your glass. Then, then, I'm pretty sure you're going to get your new one because I know y'all want to drink I know y'all want to be drinking out your shit. But this motherfucker say, come in. That's for y'all, baby girl. He waiting on you. That's all I'm saying. He, he obviously must be preparing his mind and his home for somebody. Just saying. Right. But nevertheless, we're going to go ahead and dive in deep into this thing. I do want to welcome everybody who's watching. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Y'all already know that even though this is, the, is a discussion between me and Alvin, you know what I'm saying? We want y'all comments. So that way we can make sure that the director in the back is going to incorporate them with the episode. And y'all are, I got my, I got my best friend. And business manager here for Talk Your Shit Podcast in the back. So y'all make sure y'all holler at the girl. That's right. That's you know what right. I'm saying? Because she going to give my motherfucking feedback. One thing about Jennifer is when Jennifer got something to say, she going to motherfucking say it. Yeah. And for all the folks listening, I am no doctor. <laughs> I don't have a PhD uh-huh. in, in, in child psychology or anything like that. 
but I do have a PhD in life uh-huh. and raising my own. Come on, man. Okay, so mm-hmm. I just want to let them know that because you know, sometimes they say, "Well, you think you're a doctor?" <laughs> doctor Conan. Yeah, doctor. that sounds good. Isn't it? I mean, I mean, hey, make do what it do. Now. Maybe that's, right. that's you, maybe that, maybe, maybe, but maybe that's what's next. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and uh, talk about this uh, absent present father, right? Absolutely. Let me give you a little bit of details on what it is, and then um, we're gonna go ahead and create a dialogue, right? Absolutely. So, an absent present father is a parent who is still in the home yet unavailable. Mm-hmm. They still in the home, but they're unavailable. So I want to ask you, uh, Alvin, a question. Are you a father? Absolutely. Of a, of a beautiful 14-year-old. Um, she's overseas right now doing studies. Come on, now. Um, she'll be back this week. It's been a rough week for me. Right, right, right. Just because uh, she was gone, and this her first time being gone out of the country by herself with a group. Mm-hmm. But I had to trust. I had to trust God and trust the faith and trust the, right. you know, yeah. was, was getting ready to come forth. But, yeah, yeah, I definitely am. Are you an active father? Definitely active. Hands on. Hands on. I, what, is, is she, are you guys living together? What does your active fatherness looks like? So we don't live together. Okay. Um, but I had to realize at a certain point that we didn't have to live together because mm-hmm. it did haunt me for years after um, things went sour with mm-hmm. her mom. By the way, mm-hmm. she was a great person. Mm-hmm. I respect her all most. She's a great. Close. She's a great uh, mom, mm-hmm. but things just didn't work out. Right. And that's where right. maturity and adultness comes in because you have to understand those things to be able to raise your child correctly. Oh, yeah. Come on now. But <laughs> little things like picking her up from school, mm-hmm. uh, going on a field trip, being a, uh, just being there right. everywhere, graduation, anything. You know, I'm Emotionally there. available. Emotionally. Um, she surprised me about two weeks ago and... Um, Somebody asked her, what's the best thing you like about your father? She right. said, I can talk to him about anything. Aww. And, you know, as as a father, we don't ask them that. But for right. her, for somebody to ask her that and then she say that, yeah, it was amazing. Maybe it felt great. But also, too, there's a couple things in life mm-hmm. you cannot. Mm-hmm. Okay? Okay, I'm listening. You got to work hard in both of these areas. Come on now. That's your, that's your job and that's your kids. At the end of the day, they mm-hmm. both can bless you and they both can hurt you. Oh, okay. So I just want y'all to know that. What you All mean right. by that? Um, break that down. It, 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 what, what you mean? It can bless you and it can hurt you. What you mean by? Because I got my own. I got my own thoughts in my I mind. You, I, I, got you, I got you. Well, for me, I feel like I couldn't be blessed if I didn't take care of my daughter the way she needed to be taken care of. Mm-hmm. She didn't ask to be here, so I had to make sure her life was more simplistic mm-hmm. growing up without me being in the house mm-hmm. to the point of she understanding that's my daddy. Yeah. He gonna make sure I'm straight. Yeah. He gonna make sure I'm good. Mm-hmm. Okay. Same thing with your job. If you don't do what you got to do, if you don't handle your business, they gonna get rid of you. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. So that's the whole thing I try to tell people. My mindset is a, is a lot different from a lot of people. So I just want them to understand my thought process. Absolutely. So what I what came to my and I'm happy that you broke that down because that's definitely coming from an active dad, right? Right. right. Because what I thought about when you said that it can be it can bless you and it can it can it can hurt you. Or harm you, I'm thinking of it more or less geared towards the topic, right? Correct. Because they're they're still in the home, Correct. meaning that their presence is present. But the fact that they're absent means that it's something. That's going you know what I'm saying? Exactly. That's something that is hmm? a disconnect. Exactly. So right. You mean like they're not physically there and emotionally there in the home. They're physically cool. there but not emotionally. Not emotionally. There. Absolutely. Absolutely. So you know what I'm saying? We're going to go over some things that um, I found in my research about this topic, right? It says they aren't available to... Well, as a matter of fact, let me tell you, let me tell you the direction. Because I know when you guys hear Alvin's position on fatherhood, right? He's clearly an active father. So, why is he sitting in his seat, right? Well, I ain't so, the best all the time. <laughs> I don't think okay. nobody is the best. Okay. I get anything, fucked at sometimes, too. Okay. <laughs> Just to let y'all know. Listen, I'm an active mom. Very present active okay. mom. You understand what I'm saying? Yes. I'm joking. It's yes. always around. But hit 
me what I say. When they say fuck the kids, nigga, I fuck the kids. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so clearly, every day ain't at my best. But you know what I'm saying? I, I think that only people who could really say fuck the kids is the people who's active. You know what I'm right. saying? That's because right. Because we clearly right. stand it as joking. Because nigga, I'm going to hell and back that night. You know what I'm right. saying? But um, so the direction that we decided to take here is because it's a conversation that is needed. We decided to come from one who is an active mom, right? Who's very present. And then also we have him who's a very active, present, you know what I'm saying? An active and present father in his child's life. So we decided to take that direction to give a little bit more insight as far as to where things go, to bring attention to what it is, the actions of an absent present father. Gotcha. So we want to kind of take that Absolutely. direction, right? Because who better else to give you some advice unless the person who's doing it? Because, you know, we have right. a tendency to believe that if you ain't never did it, then don't come over here talking to me about it. Right. I don't necessarily agree with that theory, but people say that all the time. So you got to do that. Right. <laughs> All right. So they are able, they're unable to share from their heart or express love and affection to their child. They're disengaged from their parental, parental, my bone really is that word, that because Jennifer will correct me, what? parental responsibilities, right? <laughs> they're frequently uh, put money, business, and their jobs above their children. They do not provide a secure environment for them to express their emotions, mm -hmm. meaning the kids, right? Mm -hmm. And they frequently withhold or refuse love, acceptance, positive, you know what I'm saying, like positive esteem, and leaving their kids with unsettled feelings. Gotcha. That's a lot to unpack. It is a lot to unpack. So when he say it can bless you or it can harm you, clearly. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's affecting these got dog on kids out here. And I actually have some stuff written down as far as to how it affects some of the kids who have an uh, active, present father. And, and clearly, you know what I'm saying? It says active, uh, present, uh, absent, present fathers, but clearly some others out there too. Yeah, moms got moms are so important in this particular thing. Um, you got to have a strong mom. Yeah. First of all. But as a man, mm -hmm. I'm looking at the camera on this one, as a man, it's your obligation to make sure the mom's in a mental place, a good place, mm -hmm. if you're not in that home, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, at the That's end of nice. the day, at the end of the day, it's going to make your life easier, it's going to make everybody's life easier. Right. As I said, you're going to get yelled at still, <laughs> and you ain't perfect, but at the end of the day, yes. okay, make sure she's in a, in a mental place that, you know what, he don't even need to do, yeah. and he's always going to be there. Yeah. Now, one thing I did decide, what? <laughs> One thing I did decide is mm -hmm. out of the two things that meant the most was monetary, being there monetary wise, uh, having the money to pay child care, and being in your child's life, where it be as you go to a graduation, where it be as you might go on a field trip. Now, I had to, you can't do both. If you do both, you're great. I mean, I'm not sure what job you got. <laughs> but uh, I said one thing to myself, I always told myself, mm -hmm. My daughter would never need anything monetary, and I can't do it for her. Right. Okay. okay. I might not be able to make every event. I'm in sales, so I'm in sales. 100% commission. Ooh. Been doing it for the last nine years. Now I heard that so, I mean, at the end of the day, <laughs> I had to sacrifice right. a lot of things, a lot of money to be there by her side. Now, am I perfect all the time? No. Am I five minutes late? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but. I am there and I'm present and she see my face and that's what all that matters. Uh -huh. I'm letting y'all guys know straight up that mental state is imperative to y'all kids' mm -hmm. mother, not baby mama. Because mm -hmm. I always correct people when they come around me. Don't come around with that baby mama stuff. You slept with her, you got in the bed with her. Come on now. And now you're trying to Ooh, Ellie, baby come mama. On now. But that's your kid's mother, your daughter's mother, or your yes. son's mother. Oh. Okay. And that's that. What like my homeboys like to do when they like when they like to give up the, the little snaps and shit. <laughs> I'm here with y'all. Yeah, that was deep. Cause I think in order to be able to make sure that you know what I'm saying, that you're providing a safe environment mm -hmm. and uh and doing whatever it is that you need to do to make sure that your child's mental health stays on Correct. point and Correct. it's to make sure that both parents are. Correct. So that was a excellent I didn't know my daughter was as strong as she was until she maybe turned about 10 or 11. Did you see 
any of the qualities, did you see any of those qualities coming from you or maybe her mother? So I've seen qualities from both sides. Mm -hmm. Okay. So like I seen like from my standpoint, she was like, oh, that's my daddy. He going to make sure I'm good. Mm -hmm. You know? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, from a mom's standpoint, I seen like she being independent. Right. Learning how to take care of herself, and if she's not around mm -hmm. family or anything, she was learning how to be independent. Yeah. Yeah. And I didn't know she was that strong, and I realized, like, dang, her mom like really showing how to be independent. Right. I'm showing her how to understand, like, your daddy gonna be there. Right. You know, I'm, I might not be there, but right. I'm be around. Right, right, right. And uh, she really took a hold of that. That's what's up. So you're showing her that uh, what what providing looks like. Absolutely. That's what, and that's what we, the kids need to understand is, is understanding that mm -hmm. they're provided for. Right. Well, let me ask you a question, Alan. Mm -hmm. Because one thing I've noticed about men who are responsible, mm -hmm. not even just being a father, men who are responsible, um, do you do you explain? I mean, because now when you ha when you bring kids into that scenario. Mm -hmm. You know, you t you know what I'm saying. Now you got to be a little bit more strategic with your time, right? right. Or you got to, you know what I'm saying. You got to be, you you, you know what I'm saying. You got to put some things in order. You got to prioritize some things, right? So how did you make? Because for you to be able to be a uh, active, present father, then that means that you had to find some balance to make sure that you're still present in your child's life. Well, how how did you get there? What 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 mentality that? Well, first, how did you get to the point where you felt like? Not only did you need to make sure that you take care of this kid, what mm -hmm. mindset, what you were saying, okay. like what, what brought you there, and then also that question. Tony, that's that's extremely deep. Yeah. That, that's deep. Um, let me say this first. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, the only thing I ever wanted to do, mm -hmm. when things got sour, the mm -hmm. only thing I wanted to do is make sure my daughter was financially taken care of. Mm -hmm. And to make sure no other man mm -hmm. had an impact on my daughter's life more than I did. Ooh. Okay? Okay. Now, as far as juggling, work, the kid, I mean, it's eight years, nine years down the road. I'm still trying to figure it out. <laughs> I love the honesty. <laughs> you know? I'm loving the honesty, dude. <laughs> I, don't, I don't even know. I really don't know. I don't know if there's ever a time where I felt 100% like I was balancing correctly. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, did you ask her? I never asked her. I never asked because her. Because I think you can ask the mother, you're going to get a different, you're going to get something different than what you're different from your Now, child. people will say, like, your daughter always with you. Mm, that's because I'm picking her up mm -hmm. from school. She going to eat. We might go to the grocery store, to the mall, and people yeah. might see us out with her. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But other than that, I mean, her, she with her mom. She stayed, she lived with her mom. She's, so. she's the primary. She's the right, right, right. Custodial. Correct. So, uh, at the end of the day, listen, mm -hmm. I'm still working on it. <laughs> okay? I'm still. So, for y'all think, y'all got it under control, it ain't under control. Anymore. <laughs> and life is ever, it's, it's it always, it's ever changing, right? It's always evolving. So, I don't need a shot on that one because. <laughs> you need, you ready to pull your shot? That straight. is a, that's a, that's a toxic situation. So, like I said, y'all got to make a decision on which area you want to focus on more. You want to, you can monetarily be there, but you got to be there for certain situations, right? Mm -hmm. You can be there for graduations and, and, and field trips, but you got to contribute something. Mm -hmm. And for y'all that think, like, I'm not on child support, but we came to an agreement. Mm -hmm. We sat down, we came to an agreement on what I should pay monthly. Mm -hmm. And for y'all, that's the how many child support. Mm. I just don't have no respect for y'all. I mean, I'm being straight. Now it could be different situations that prohibit you from from paying. I get that. That's a that's a person by person or individual by individual thing. Right. Okay, I get that. But you can't live there. You but for the majority, it. for y'all that's paying a buck fifty. Oh yeah. Mm. A month. Talk to me. Miss me with that. <laughs> because if you think that's gonna take care of your kid throughout the week or the month. You are sadly mistaken. I pay what I pay and ask my daughter, hey, what you need from Walmart or Target? Oh, come on with the maturity. Uh... Hey, what you need when we go school shopping? Hey, what you need from here? 
What all you need from here? Right. I'm getting it. Come on now. And that's mine now. I ain't, I ain't got but one. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna let y'all know I got one kid, but God has blessed me to be in a certain position to be able to, to do, that. do that for her. Right, right, okay. Right. That's what's up. Yeah. So, have you ever broke that down to your daughter when, when the moments when you can't um, make it to something that she may have wanted you? Yeah. Uh, there's been a, a couple of events I can count on my on my hand that I missed, and I told her I said, "Listen, hey, I'm sorry I can't make it. I'm at work." She understands, and she is so she can be dramatic. It's like, "Daddy, uh, your job." <laughs> so I can let her know this job paying for your college, this job paying for your middle school, high school. And if y'all live in Savannah, Georgia, you either go into public school or you go into private school. Mm-hmm. It's either or. And that private school you paying for. Yeah. You know, so. Well, that's where your baby is. No, she's not in private school no more. We took her, we took her out of private school in the sixth grade. Mm-hmm. Um, and she went to, uh, she's not she's at old, she just graduated from Old Thorpe Academy here locally in Savannah, Georgia. Um, but yeah. Congratulations. But from like maybe like second grade to like maybe six, she was in private school. And my daughter needed that. Right. She needed that one-on-one attention. And that's what I'm telling y'all. Sometimes these kids need one-on-one attention. You got to pay for it. Mm-hmm. Okay? Public school system can't give it to you. Now, we in Georgia. Mm-hmm. It's, it's 160 counties. Chatham County is like 150. Mm-hmm. Okay? So you got to figure it out for your kid. Now, are you willing to invest? I was willing to invest in mine. As long as I had noodles mm-hmm. and some running water, mm-hmm. I was good. Okay? That's facts. That's facts on me. So I tell people every day, how you like how you get there? I woke up one morning, I was like, dang, I got oh I got this and I got that. Right. I stuck with my plan. Right, right, right. I just stuck with my plan. And that's why you tell these fathers it's, it's so it's so important that y'all have to stick with y'all plan no matter what the issue is. Like we can come out of this thing. Mm-hmm. Nobody holding me back but myself. So when you raised where you're at? So my dad and my mom were married till I was probably about three years old. Mm-hmm. Um, I remember them playing a song, Get Your Back Up Off The Wall. <laughs> Get so Your like, Back Up Off The Wall. You know, like when I was, Dang. hey, come, come on. on. <laughs> like, yeah, at three years old, but I don't remember, after that they weren't together. Okay. Now, my daddy was buried in my life. He came to all the football games, all my decision making when it came to college. Okay. Um, he, was, he was there. But what he but what, what he made me understand mm-hmm. is that I'm a guy, I'm a male. At that time, monetarily he was there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I can call my daddy in the blink of an eye and call it daddy a hundred dollars. I think I got to the next day. <laughs> <laughs> because he was there for me. Mm-hmm. And and that showed me love from a male to male perspective. Right. But I had to learn how to uh bring that focus to having a daughter. Cause it's a little different, you know. Okay, so Kimmy said, I applaud all the fathers and mothers who are present in the child's life. We rock. Yeah. What I wanted to ask Alvin is when talking about um, fathers that can't pay their child support in certain situations, and this will be for both of you all because it'll be a perspective for the man and the woman. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. If a parent is not financially stable, but they're present. Does that make a difference? Because the child only knows what they're shown Correct. as far as in the parent. So the father or the mother is either down talking the parent for not having the money, and then that gives the child an attitude with the parent, even though they're present. It's a difference when they literally cannot. And it just depends on situations because I've seen people parent from prison mm-hmm. and they couldn't provide monetary. Ooh. But financially, I'm going to say, but emotionally, emotionally, emotionally they were there. And some of the children can talk to those parents better than the, the parental or the custodial right. parent. Absolutely. So is it a way that you can get to a point to where I don't, I know that he doesn't have it, but I respect him or her because they're still trying to be active. And yes. then in time, they might be able to get, you know, they can't stay there. How do you feel from that perspective to well, make remember, it work? Remember from the beginning, I said I chose one. I chose one. Right. And my choice was monetary because I know at the end of the day, long-term wise, mm-hmm. long-term wise, mm-hmm. it could be more beneficial. Right. Now, the emotional side, too, mm-hmm. I mean, that's big. That's big, too. That's very big. Now, I will say this. If he is there emotionally for your kid and not giving monetary, I'm going to say this. 
let him be in that kid's life, okay? He might not be that monetary, I get it. I understand. I have been there myself, right? I have been in the place where I had $20 in my pocket, and that's all I had, okay? So I can't, I can't jump on either side and say which one is better. Let him be this monetary, let him be there. Because you want, you can help, that money can help you pay your rent. Emotionally, emotionally he's there for your daughter because guess what? Or your son, they know the qualities of life, they'll understand certain things. Let him be there. Now if he ain't just doing nothing, that's a whole different story. But I can't tell you which which one is better than the other because they both play a big role. Absolutely. In that, in that kid's life. Yeah, I don't know if one is, is, is better than the other, right? Or if right. one is more important than the other. I think they both, they play their part, right? Mm -hmm. And then when it comes to, because I want to make sure that I answer your question, um, because, I mean, nothing fails. I'm speaking from a man. Okay. Right. Absolutely. So, from a mother's standpoint, she might can tell you a little bit different, but that's, that's tough. Yeah. That's tough. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, um, you know, nothing fails. Like, uh, if, if you try and effort, I'm, I'm here for effort all day. Give me what I say. And that's what we want. I'm not going to diminish it. Okay. That's what we want to understand that we give. And that's all we can, That's all we want. Like, listen, I'm giving my best effort forward mm -hmm. either direction. We kind of want to know that we're being given. That I want to know that you know I'm giving effort. Yeah. Right. So speak well, to the mothers right for fathers who don't have it. What would be your plea to a mother who is basically saying, "Leave us alone until you can figure it out." Okay. So, so he, he, don't, he don't have the money. Mother. He, yeah, have he the money. doesn't have the money, but he wants to be a part. But she doesn't want him around because she's carrying the load. Okay. And some women are hard on fathers in that way. Is there a plea that you can give to mothers? to allow those fathers to be there in any way that they can because some kids just don't have it. What would be your plea to a mother on a father's stance or Tanya on a mother's stance? Um, that's very tough. I have to ask this question though. Like, when you, met, question. when you met this person, what were they like when you met them? Mm -hmm. So it's a back story. Correct. So that's what I'm saying. In situations, it could be different. Right. But whatever the story is, they're now at ground zero. Correct. So okay. whether you met them at the top or met them at the bottom, this at this at. moment, that's they're at ground zero, but they want to be present. Mm -hmm. And can't give money. They can't be financially present right now. Mm -hmm. But if they take their child and want to spend time with them and all they can buy them is a hot dog, mm -hmm. that's the best hot dog that child might have had. Yeah. Well, I'm all for that. Be the fact. Let him do that. Everybody, everybody can't do both. I cannot do both. I just chose one and focus on it for personal reasons and for my kid. Right. What did you please? know? Talk to the women. I'm sorry. For yeah. personal reasons and for financial reasons, I wanted to focus on monetary. Like be there. I got to be there for one, either monetary or physically. And I and I chose monetary because physically, that physical ain't gonna last always. Just like you're saying right now, you know. Monetary, he not there, so he may need. You just want one hundred fifty dollars. Can he give me a buck fifty mm -hmm. a month? I know people. I know friends of mine that are forty five dollars uh, a month. Okay, now I don't say nothing to that. I understand they might be working a job that they can't afford that, but you gotta let them be in their life. But you gotta also have faith that at some point in time in that person's life. He going to grow. Okay? Let him grow. Let him understand, like, listen, he, if he, if he's physically, I'm going to take it right here. If he's physically though, emotionally, emotionally though, and, and hold on, I'm sorry, because then you get it all mixed up. If he emotionally there, mm -hmm. and wants to be present, and wants to be present, I promise you, if he had the money, he'll pay you. Amen. Tony, what is your plea to the dads that don't have it, and as a mother, it's hard for you to carry this load? How do you allow them to still be present without being bitter and bringing that bitterness onto the children? You want to speak to them or you want me to speak to their mom? Speak to the mothers. How do you handle it? All right. I mean, because I'm pretty, I'm, I'm, I'm a piggyback a little bit off the album, right? Um, I'm just a one. I'm, I'm, I'm naturally, Lord just created me that way, right? I'm, I'm all for forgiveness. I'm all for extended grace. I'm here because I'm human and I, and I realize within my own life 
that um, I, I, some, I, I may be, I may want to do something, but I, not, I may not necessarily get to doing exactly what it is that I, I wanted to do. Or maybe I didn't uh, do it exactly in the manner of which I wanted to do it, right? So I'm always here to uh, look at things from the other person's perspective, right? Mm -hmm. I'm able to give a little leeway, some work through, and that's enough for me right there. When you say effort, mm. when you say effort, I hear, hear me when I speak, ladies. If he's trying, be willing to listen. You don't if know what kind of relief that gives me from hearing it from you mm -hmm. for all these years. Like, the relief it gives me when you say effort, mm -hmm. because we, we want to. Mm -hmm. We want to. Yeah, but it has to be, because I think a lot of people may have a desire to. But there's no effort with it. There's mm. no to do with it. I got you. So when there is a to do with it, I'm here for it. You know what I'm saying? Because that, I can work with that. And I'm a destiny push. But I don't like yes people around me. I need somebody to not only hold me accountable, but push me a little, you know what I'm saying? Mm. Nudge me forward. You know what right. I'm saying? I got you. Bang against the wall, jump a little tight. I feel like I can't go nowhere else. But you know, the friends that, one of the friends behind them, you know what I'm saying? Behind that screen. Listen, tell you, I don't like this. I don't like that. You can do this better. You know, I would just about to say what I said. Well, I, you can get it if you won't put your feelings in your pocket because say said what I said. Mm -hmm. Now get it done. Because at the end of the day, you need somebody to push you. So if you won't do anything, don't push them back. You know what I say? I mean, by I'm the bicycle, to move forward. You can deliver Uber Eats on a bicycle. Uh, hello. Have a conversation with me. Tell me where you at. What can I help you do to be more exactly. present, more more financially? Do I need to help you get a bicycle? Exactly. Mm -hmm. exactly. What right. can I do to assist to get you to where you feel right. like you want to be? Now, I get it. Some guys, like as Jennifer said, mm -hmm. they might offer, can I help you get a bicycle? What do I need to do? And they still just don't do. Yeah, we got you know, a problem with that. I, I, I got a problem with that. Yeah, I got a problem with that too. I can't speak, <laughs> to, them. I can't speak to them until I see them personally, face to face, and ask for them. I, I, I don't know the situation, but I just have to understand, like, everybody is not going to do and feel how I feel. And, and I'll say this again. Well. And I'll say this on top of that. Even if you can't get past that, the child don't need to hear nobody. That, that's the big struggle is the parents who have the tension between one another, which causes the tension for the child, or the so, child yeah. ends up being the pawn yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. in the game. Absolutely. And the child being the pawn ends up because a lot of black people, and just to be honest, don't believe in therapy. Mm. Some of these children need therapy I mean, after the stuff that they go through. We're, we're, with we're children. a little bit more advanced today, but today I we are. Yes, yes. I get it. But don't cause your child to need more therapy. I'm with you. Absolutely, I agree with you. Yeah. Right so now. I definitely, I, I don't, I, I listen, because I, I have three kids, right? Okay. I have uh, my two oldest kids, Dad. Listen, good. <laughs> It's, it, it ain't never been given. It's never gave. You know what I'm saying? And and, and you already know what that means. But then I also have, uh, you know, my I have my youngest son, who's, who's, who's father, and we're going to get a little to it by this subject. Okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But he, 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 was, he was that dad. You know right. what I'm saying? He, he was there. And uh, but the thing about it for me saying that is because the, the first dad, he, he never, it wasn't there. Mm -hmm. You don't hear me telling my kids that. Then you would never hear not one of my two oldest kids ever. Well, ever say that. Well, ever. We well, you know I told you. I told you. Say that I said right. something negative well, about I told you their, their, their you, dad. I told you earlier, earlier today you're a very strong woman, and uh, you know <laughs> that takes a lot for you not to say anything to criminalize that that gentleman. It, that it man, really don't, but know? I understand why you say that. So that's why I said what I said. I told you you're you a strong woman, but. That's a very touchy topic, and uh, I can't see it from that perspective, and I, and I understand it from your eyes, and I'm just yeah. speaking about it. I appreciate know? it. I appreciate right. it. No, thank you. But yeah, and it doesn't take a lot for me, because I and I appreciate it, right? And I, and I thank you. It doesn't take a lot for me, because it's just me, and how my mindset right. is, and where my heart is geared to. So, I mean, and, and it's, it's not going to benefit me. Not what it's actually going to do is it's going to hurt my kid, but it's going to benefit me by, by I, me wanting you to see 
what how no good he is. Man, I'm not, I'm not here for it. I, I'm not even one for it. Just saying, like if me and you had a bad experience, right. and now Jennifer interested in you, I'm not, I, I'm not hurt. I'm Jennifer, the nigga did. Well, that, that's I'm not saying. doing that, girl. That Whatever your experience is gonna be with him, it's gonna be with him. I'm not trying to step on no toes, so I'm not gonna do that with my kids either. Take a grown woman. Y'all are grown women, you know, that have been through life. No, because them that ain't grown with them kids. <laughs> Who around here talking about that daddy? I'm just saying, because it takes more than uh, people being grown. Mm. And it takes even a little bit more than you being mature, because you even have some people out here maturing and handling their junk. You know what I'm saying? Just take a different type of individual. But I'm, I'm, we're going to talk about some things, right? Because Adam has some things that he wants to go over as well. But I'm going to talk about some signs of an absent present father. Just in case if you're not aware that you are, I'm going to help you out. Because now I'm saying, you probably already know. If you already feel like you should be doing more, then you're teetering. And what I'm going to need you to do is come back to these lists of God dog on things that I'm going to lay on down here online. Lay on You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and then you can, you, you know what I'm saying? You can go back to the drawing board. You can figure out whether or not what category you are in. Because I had experience with a, um, my, my, I believe my husband was an excellent uh husband and I, my ex-husband at this point, right? I believe mean, he was an excellent husband. Well, excellent husband. And then I also thought he was an excellent dad. But there's also things everybody can work on, right? Mm -hmm. And he fell into this category. Not fully, but he definitely uh, tap dance all around this motherfucking absent present father. Right? But, okay. So some of the signs of an absent present father is lack of attention. To who? The kids or you? To, <laughs> we talk, we... I'm not his kid. Okay, well, I'm asking because I'm, don't get it mixed up. You said lack of attention. That's lack we of ain't attention. About, we talk about the kids, Alvin. I know we talk about kids, but you might involve your feelings in that question. That's talking about that moment that Jennifer was talking about. We ain't talking about sheep. Okay. Well, I'm, just, I'm, just, I'm just being clear. Right. It's about the kids. About the kids. So he lacks, it's a lack of attention, meaning that they don't pay attention to their kid, right? Okay. They don't, they, they, they're, they're disinterested. Mm -hmm. They're preoccupied. Even when they're out of the box. Okay. You know what I'm saying? They show little or no interest in their child's life. Travis Brown said, it sounds like you're talking about you. Mm. What you mean? Travis, what do you mean? <laughs> <laughs> That's that question. Travis, when I yeah. said, you talking about you or the kids? <laughs> Yeah, what are you talking about? <laughs> Sounds to me like Listen, that's what he's talking about. Look, cute. Hey, Travis. Look, I know motherfucking cheers in, nigga. As a matter of fact, we're going to cheers to this reality I'm about to give y'all ass. Come on here. <laughs> Look, I'm so, talking about cuz with the attention. So, clearly, what we're talking about. Yes. So, look, cuz, because I'm about to check. Checkmate, right? Because, uh, this yeah. topic is about fathers, absent, present fathers, right? So we talking about the kids. We ain't talking about me. I understand, yeah, and I, I will. I will say. I will say this. I don't think she was talking about her. You were being paid? From no, for no one. <laughs> but but you did call that. Sometimes that question. That's an emotional question. So sometimes you can slip in your that's emotions. Trigger yeah, me trigger me. <laughs> but you can slip in your emotions. To that question because you might have felt left out, and so you thought, therefore, you thought the kids were left out. Not yet. Good point. Mm -hmm. um, Not the issue, but good point. Uh huh. Right. For some of us. Uh, we're talking about the kids. It's two different lanes. <laughs> I mean, that is, that is a topic coming, though. And I'm hey. full, I'm, I got a whole bunch to say. As a matter of fact, that, 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 that guy, that one show, gonna be long. Well, y'all want to see me in my feelings, that's going to be a motherfucking show y'all can see me in my Ooh. feelings. You know what I'm talking about? Because I'm bringing them honest. I'm going to keep 1,000. Okay, All okay. right, so it's going to be like attention. And then the number two is they show little to uh, no interest in their kid's life, right? Then they're hard, they hardly participate in their children's activities. Mm -hmm. uh, failure to acknowledge any accomplishments. Mm -hmm. They rarely have one-on-one -on -one time with their kids. They're usually selfish. Okay, hold on. Can we? Mm -hmm. You listed about four or five things. Uh -huh. right there. I was actually on one moment case. before you respond. The problem be mm -hmm. 
Most mothers want attention as well, so it interferes with the children. Mm. I need to be there for the kids and y'all feelings show. Mother, in your hey, listen here, whatever. Travis, that's Travis. Hey, Travis. <laughs> y'all respond to Tanya because Travis showing out. Go ahead. Yeah. Yeah, it, it ran in the blood. But we appreciate it, Travis. Continue yeah. with the with the interreaction. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it runs in the blood. So I already know you understand what you're Because, though, you already know. Duke I can and say it. I'm going through it now. Oh. Come on. Duke. Duke. <laughs> Duke from last week. <laughs> because I got a, a show closer um, topic on um, <laughs> question for y'all. And, and, and we got you. So what 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 is it that I need to address about what, what Travis said? Sure. Um, Travis said the problem is most mothers want attention as well, so it interferes with the children. So I'm going to assume, and Travis, if I'm right or wrong, let me know. It sounds like he's saying when you're separated and they're trying to interact with the kids, mm-hmm. or when they or when you're not and they want to interact with the kids, you don't feel, or the mothers don't feel that they're getting enough attention. Which causes the interference with them Absolutely. showing the now, children attention. Now you gotta attention. split the attention. You know what I'm saying? Which probably makes you, uh, you know what I'm saying? What probably makes you want to retreat, right? It makes you want to pull back, and now you don't probably don't even want to spend the time with the kids right. because I didn't come here to give you no attention. Right. Dookie I, I, said mm-hmm. he's going through it now. She wants me back. She missed the wee wee. <laughs> okay, so they don't want to record him and Travis. I mean, what? Listen, mm. I mean, we, if we be honest, we already know that. Absolutely. Or they try to include themselves in the plans with the kids. Absolutely. So you just going to make it be a family out when you know. Well, that. I do think that some of that is needed. Now, well, granted, I, if your feelings are still attached, I think that it, sh- it should not be done. Well, Kennard, my son, him and his um, son's mother, they get together once a month and do something with the son. Absolutely. And then outside of that, Kudos they spend time separate. Know. But they do get okay. together to show that their son that they can interact without problems. Yes. But it takes a lot of maturity to do that. Interact. It takes a lot of that. And my son is only 23. Right, but that, that, a he learned that, early that, though. Right, but that, but a little bit of that direction came from you. He learned right, that early. Exactly. That came from you. You know what I'm saying? Because if he'd stayed mm-hmm. in his feelings, then he'd have had nobody. If he didn't have a gentleman. Because what you're not going to do is treat women the way you don't want a man to treat your mama or sister. Come on so now. So get right and get left. And it was a question that I had asked you because, uh, Albert, let me stop touching you because I realized that that's one of the signs of, yeah, flirtation. He talking about they be hunching too. <laughs> they do not be hunching, dude. They My son be- do not be hunching her. <laughs> they but if he wants to, he can but he don't want to. No, 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 no. Because well, he don't want to blur the lines. No. He don't want to blur the lines, so right. he won't do it. Stay away. Stay away. Because the yeah. lines is definitely going to be. You know, he, he know that that's going to be an issue. So he's going to not One thing I will say, uh, Jennifer Jennifer, mm-hmm. and Tanya, we go back. We go back. Wait, wait, wait. Back. We, Babies and pacifiers, old school cat. And we don't ask for how long we've been back and went back. We go back. Okay. <laughs> We yeah. had some conversation today. We talked about some personal things, and, and, and yeah. that's what, what it was, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so we we Absolutely. all good. Yeah. So <laughs> this community here. You gotta say it. This, yeah. Huh? Yeah. I gotta say it. You gotta say it. Yeah. So I gotta yeah. say it. Because yeah. he just said, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> all right, carry on. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I'm, 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 I'm a couple years removed from Florida, so I got to get the lingo back. <laughs> right, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I go home enough to keep it. But guess what though? When I hear it, though, it's on. It's on. It's on the pop. <laughs> Go ahead. I didn't mean to cut you off. No, no, no. He's fine. <laughs> He's fine. But th- these are two two women that I've seen mm-hmm. be young women to grow to be who they are today. Mm-hmm. And these y'all mamas, I promise you, right now here today, mm-hmm. y'all got some strong women ahead of you, but I'm trying yeah. to tell you, the game plan, no games, okay? And they're all about their kids and all about life and they understand everything. We talk about a lot of things. I mean, not even things. Close enough. Well, I mean, a lot of things. As a male, as a man, I don't expect everything. <laughs> but I, I feel like I'm getting about 80%. You know what I'm saying? I, you know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? So that's, 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 good, that's good enough for me. Yeah. I don't need a hundred. Oh, you know, you know, you don't know how to say young, but you know how to say a hundred. Hundred. Um, I see that you have your laptop. Is there some things that you would like to absolutely point out? Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. You want me to put my fingerprint and open this thing up? I would like you to let us know what's popping. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Let me see what you got. Come on. Okay, I do want to know this. Mm-hmm. 
Why is it so important for the woman to meet your child? Y'all just met. Let's just say y'all met <laughs> March 15th. And today being what? May the what? 4th? June, June, June 5th. June 4th. June 5th. No, the 5th of March. That's the number. Yeah, today. The 4th. The 4th. So y'all met on March 15th, June 4th, and she want to meet your kid already. Like, I'm trying, I've been wrestling with that for a long time. I've had that happen. I've been dating, I've been, I've, when I was dating, yeah, right. um, <laughs> that's right. You got to be clear on that. Yeah. Women child molesters too, but go ahead. I get it. But what was it so important about, like, uh, you meeting my kid? Because I always felt like my kid ain't the one that's going to keep you here. Well, I mean, what's your perspective on it? Uh huh. So we're gonna slide on in here, right? Because I feel okay, right? Because we're mothers. Well, I'm a mother, right? So if I'm dating a guy with a child, mm -hmm. you know what I'm saying? Motherhood is important to me. And if I see that you're a responsible father, then I realize that it is also important to you. Meaning that I think that you, you're not going to bring no anybody around your child, right, right. right? So if I feel like that is very present in your actions and your conversation, you know what I'm saying, in your interaction with your kid, then I'm like, okay, good prospect. You know what I'm saying, right? And then now if I'm asking you, like, when are you going to let me meet your daughter? And if you allow, hold that thought, because I know that joker that says something, right? <laughs> so if, 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 if you allow me, into your child's presence, then what it is, is not only do I feel like you, you feel like it's potential enough where this can actually be more than what it currently is. Like, yes. you can see a future with us, yes. right? But I'm also, when you say that this ain't going to keep you here, that is what we think. We, we know that your child is near and dear to your heart, so you're not going to just throw no anybody into her presence. For active yeah. and present fathers. Uh-huh. So y'all think that's going to keep you no, but it's going to, you know what I'm saying, it's, it might better our chances. That's what that woman is thinking. Okay. And in my opinion, I think that women that want to meet the children feel like if they can get up under the child, it'll keep them around longer. Mm -hmm. And then they're thinking if they build that bond, you'll see the bond that they made yeah. with the child, which makes them feel like they're more capable of winning your heart so that it can escalate to yeah, what they the want to do. Yeah, because the daughter can advocate for us. Yeah. Okay. Because now all the time when they come around, I'm like, oh, what is Tanya? What is Tanya? I do like what you have said. Uh huh. But my daughter or son is an extension of me. Uh huh. Okay. Well, you, and you go, they go. It's an extension of me. Okay. What, what, what you saying, Elvis? Okay. Let me. Let me. Let me. Let me. Um. <laughs> let me say what Dookie has to say. Ah. Uh, Dookie says when I was younger. I would drop my kids off with a different stepmother every weekend. <laughs> he then said, "No, now it's a no-no." I get the, he got the wrong idea, so now it's a no-no oh, because he get it because with age comes wisdom. Right. Um, uh. Leading them on is what it is. So that's exactly what it is. When you bring that child around, that that woman think what's happening. Dude, leading them on. So Dookie, I really respect that. Like you really grow. You, that was growth. But what y'all like to do no. in y'all goddamn show? That was growth because he said he used to do that, but then now times have led him to see something different. So it comes a child when a, a boy becomes a man. That I don't know if he, he, he's full of man yet, but he grow. He get there. Much respect. He a part of the booty cat. That, 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 that is what he always he all the way in. He's talking about Deacon Dookie. <laughs> Deacon Dookie. I am loving it. Deacon um, Dookie. Can you say it? You have to earn that right to meet the kids. Right. So yeah. you have to earn that. And I think that when you're um, introducing kids, I don't think it's a set time. I think it's a, your feeling. Like if you feel like exactly. this person is going to be exactly. around, I would say bring them around because this can just be daddy's friend. And exactly. we're going to the park and having games and they don't see you laid up in the bed and we'll see her spending the night with you. Right. Just to see how she interacts with the child. Or vice versa, or how he interacts with the child, because this can just be mama friend from work, right. and just to see how they respond to the child, and how because kids have a vibe, just like we have a vibe when Absolutely. something feels off about something. Absolutely, just like your mom can tell you when your best friend not really your best friend. Mm -hmm. Mothers see things in advance, so I'm right. sure, and kids have things that they can see that, that makes them a, feel uh, weary about that. that definitely a great question, to answer. Yeah, and I think, but I think you just want to be careful with that. Before he said, "Y'all, pre he preaching the word." Come on now, deep. <laughs> deep. Look, you, you see, I say Dookie, I say deep. That's deep and Dookie. That that D D. 
<laughs> I'm loving it. So I'm loving crazy. it. crazy. But okay. just be careful because obviously you have heard from a woman what that what that can right, what, right, what, right, what right. that can mean. Right, right, right. Right. So in that, Tanya's going to ask another question while she's getting her question ready. My question to you all is: in meeting um, your in the absent parent when it's only a one parent household at the moment, what do you look forward to? Like, how do you question? Is it okay to ask the other parent? about the sibling, about the spouse that they have around your kids now. Because we know that now people are bringing in stepmothers and stepfathers that are molesting these children, that are misleading them, that are when you're at work, they're punishing them. You understand what I'm saying? Is there a way to talk to the other parent that is a present parent about who is around your spouse? Is it okay for them to know that information? Or do you just trust that they will do the right thing? It's a little both. So how do y'all feel about that? I, I feel like it's a little bit of both. That's a like whole a lot of D. He ain't lying. <laughs> Jesus, y'all that can keep it. That's a whole lot of D. You're talking about the two double the D. The double D. Yeah. D. Yeah. D. Yeah. D. D. Yeah. D. Double D, that is. When you say it's a whole lot of D. Yeah. Go ahead. Double D. Double D. But uh, that's a tough conversation. That's another conversation you got to sit down and talk about. Um, I will say this right here. Um, my daughter... Um, we've had conversations, but we haven't been there to have that, that sit down, like, well, well, who you dating and who you that? I think we both talk enough and respect enough and understand a lot that we know our decision making. Now, we don't know everybody's decision making, but right. I kind of feel her decision making, and I, I feel like she wouldn't put anybody in harm danger with my daughter. Mm-hmm. Versus that's how she feels, too, with me. Right. So Dookie said he would just talk to the kid. If your child is one of the one, two-year-olds that can't do a lot of speaking, how do you have that conversation, especially if you all don't have a respectable relationship? You're already at ease. You guys, communication is definitely a lot effective between you guys. Let me say this in time. You can talk. I'm sorry. Uh, I will say this to Dookie, though. Uh, It depends on the age of that particular kid. Yeah. Um, when you feel like they are able to uh, have that conversation. Mm-hmm. Now, like I said, I didn't know my daughter was, she going to these schools, they go to these schools, you don't know what they doing at school now. <laughs> you know how advanced she is. I mean, we don't yeah. know. We so I don't know how advanced she is. What she understanding? Yeah. She meet other girls that ain't, that, girl, my dad ain't even here. Oh, my daddy come pick me up from school. Mm-hmm. You know, so she don't understand a lot of things. So I have to understand, like, that's listen. These kids know more than what you think they know. They, right. they, they and some, but right. but even if they know more than so what I you would, think they know, there's it's still surface, right? Because they're kids. I would say eleven, twelve mm-hmm. is that conversation you just you can just talk to the to the kids. Yeah, because they're not going deep, right? They're not going right. deep as though this this needs to be right? right. So whatever input that they give you is surface, right? Right. And if you're a surface ass nigga, then it's gonna be good enough for you. But if I'm going for Jennifer's question, mm-hmm. give it to me again. So that way I make sure that I answer. Jennifer so basically I was just asking, how do you, is that a conversation? Are you When you are when you when two people do not interact well, they have a tumultuous relationship and they're separated. And then just, just for instance, you know that this person they're talking to maybe is in the streets. You don't heard they bring dope in the house. You, you know, whatever the situation is. How do you handle that conversation? Absolutely. What if, you know, this person might be a child molester. Is it okay to ask about the other person's spouse? Even though we know that as a parent, we wouldn't bring in and run around our parents. But is it okay to have that conversation? Absolutely. And I think, the, and, and, and again, I, I feel like it's a little bit of both, right? And I don't think that we oh, should make dookie. each other yeah, feel nice. as though that, I, I don't think it's okay to rob the other parent of that information, mm-hmm. right? Of that conversation, okay. right? Because even though we may not be together, that's still my kid. Mm-hmm. I love her. Mm-hmm. I'm here for her best interest. I'm here to protect her. All of that come, all of that that comes with parenting, right? right. Mm-hmm. And I don't think that it's okay to rob the other parent of right. that information. Right. So if they say that that's what they want, then obviously it has went past. So and that just goes back to to the judgment. 
not only with the judgment, but the fact of that, judgment. Yeah, but the fact that if you already don't have a conversation and then you go to this person and you're not financially able, so she already talked junk to you. She's not going to allow you well, to question I mean, her about who she has around. He do more for your kids than you do. You know what I'm saying? So it can be a very when, it, when you situation. When you're talking about people who are not immature, that's a whole different category. But, but if we're talking about mature parents, then right. you cannot rob that other parent of that guy dog on, uh, of the information. Because okay. if they want to know, then that guy dog won't want to know. And I think that you should definitely be able to have that conversation. But I do believe that if they ask you for that information... Because I, I believe that you can trust a person's judgment, right. but at the same time, I'm still me. I got my own motherfucking thoughts, so we may not function the damn same. So that means right. when I say we ain't function the same, then I might go a little bit further than what you are going currently. So if I'm bringing that question or that conversation to the table, then it has went past your judgment. Okay. And yes, let them have it. Kimi said, my child's sperm donor is an absentee parent. Even if he came around... Time to time, my baby, my baby couldn't spend the night at their house mm -hmm. due to the fact he don't know him, let alone know her. He would have to be present and active. Dookie over here shooting okay, his on, shot. Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So, this is how men think that are present and active. Okay? You met this guy, wherever you met this mm -hmm. guy at. Y'all started talking. Mm -hmm. You saw a red flag, but you overlooked it because the time was good. He hadn't got some of that good dingling you saying? I, okay. I don't, I, I, I don't want to even say it. It could, it could be that. It could be that. It could be monetary what? things. It could be he was Whatever emotional. Whatever situation is. Okay. Yeah. Whatever so you overlooked the red signs. Like. So he go from y'all making the baby to he ain't even done. No kind of way? Um, That's happened several times. So that's not... Um, far fetched. Okay, and I apologize. This not, okay. I'm not. Uh, no, he was. Just, you were just asking King me. Yeah, yeah. I'm not. The situation. I'm not. I'm not. I'm not going judging to judge anything. Yeah. Judge. I'm just saying from my eyes and my perspective. I can't. I don't see it. You don't way. understand how I went from that. King me said he's not there in any kind. Of, no kind of way. No shape, form, or fashion. Yeah, Dookie came in and shot his shot at Tasha, <laughs> and then he said, "Don't bring no dope boys around my jits." And then Tasha said, hey, honey. And Dookie said, I'm going to whoop everybody in the house. And Joe Jackin sent their eyes. And Joe Jackin said, not red signs, red flags. I know one thing. If you're from <laughs> Georgia, if you're from southern Georgia or Florida, yeah, them boys were running things back then. <laughs> we were talking about Ah, uh, here we go. Them deep boys were running Okay, here All we right. go. What else y'all got? <laughs> well, Tanya got, uh... I'm gonna finish. But guess what, though? Right. It's never how you start, it's how you finish. Well, you I don't know? necessarily agree. And at the end of the day, they don't want you now, but they want you later. May not necessarily be the case. That's the case. Back then, they didn't want me. Now I'm hot, they all they want me. On you. And exes I don't want them. Our exes for a reason. I don't need that. I don't need that. I don't need that. Y'all yeah. Jackin ain't gonna come over here to talk your shit again and tell us that it's not red signs but it's red flags. It's gonna be a red sign, stop sign, purple sign, whatever what color not sign gonna we do. say it is. Job Jackin. Something happened. Is you not well who well who made did you make did you say red signs or did you say red flags? Was it Alvin? I said it was a red flag at some point. I I mean at this point, if it if he said was it, it Jennifer or whether sign. it was Jennifer or whether it was Alvin who said a red sign. Red flag. What you not they, gonna they do know. is come over here over and make him. my and, 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 and make my guests feel easy. All up and kind of check because I got four oh, degrees. My, hello, and just <laughs> that four degrees. Because y'all got a habit of doing it. You know I can it? talk to you from the trap house to the White House. Go, and Joe Jack and if I said it, got done to take it to the bank and cash it because they gonna cash anything I say. Because it's official like a referee whistle. And if they won't cash in the fucker, I will. Because I ain't. Boom shaka laka laka boom shaka laka. <laughs> Y'all gotta stop your list. Because they, they carry a certain. They, they carry them jaw them jackals. Look, he's talking, it was Jennifer. They carry a certain amount of energy. But I fuck with them. You know what I'm saying? If you ain't following them, Alvin, make sure you follow them. Go follow them. Because they should talk. Like Listen, I love it. You love it. I Duke, love it. Because Dookie, that's Dookie. Duke hey, is a hey, part of judging. Hey, hey, Duke, I appreciate you for following. <laughs> you an advocate follower. Much appreciated. Much respect. <laughs> they told me you need to get your degree. Degree your ass on now. <laughs> <laughs> That's for all 
don't like black people. They don't know how to act. All right, okay. so the back to these I ain't got one more question. Tell me okay, what you got. Stop questions. So I'm going to finish up these signs of, of, a, of, a, of, a, of an absent present father. So we left off at six, where they're usually, they're usually selfish, right? Then they hardly demonstrate affection openly. Wow. That was actually the last one. That's definitely a show because men feel like boys need to be tough. Mm -hmm. And boys need to be shown that love, too. Mm -hmm. They do. Mm -hmm. I mean, and it don't always need to be tough love because some people rate, like I remember it was some show he was like the movie with Morris Chestnut and he was like his dad, it was always like tough love, you never just showed me love, right. it was always Ooh. hard, you, you see what I'm saying? You're talking about um, it? Deliver, deliver Me From Evil. One of them, I don't remember the name of the show right now, but Dookie said we are the vibe dealers, much love. Absolutely. Definitely that. I already know that. Definitely that. Y'all yeah. want my, my yes. clothes? No, 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 wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. Because... <laughs> Hey, you know it don't take much. They don't. We run. We run the airways. We run the airways. Yes, sir. This is love. And talk shit because we in the south. Because Alvin said, "I mean, I'm just saying." Talk your shit, Alvin. Wait a minute, wait. Because long, long as you don't push my mother's head down like Dookie did. Because what we not gonna do is have a wreck. I just, I just feel like the top. Talk your mother like shit. That's right. I just feel like the top we had today. <laughs> is the top you can talk for for a long time. It's just it's a tough topic. It is. It's it a is. much needed conversation. It's a tough topic. It's a much needed conversation. I think we need to come to Florida and do a part two. I'm just Ooh. saying. So I'm, what I'm going to do because I want to hey. go over some of the effects that it has of the kids. Now, okay. Jennifer, where does your question fit in? It is. Um. Speaking to fathers who struggle with the mothers who are absent and decide to let the child make the decision. Like, I know a lot of dads say, I did everything I can do. I'm tired of dealing with her. She's a struggle to deal with. I'm going to just pay my child support. And when my child get old enough, they can decide if they want to deal with me or not. Mm -hmm. What do you say to fathers that are so upset mm -hmm. they just unchecked out I ain't leaving my on mind. the parents? I ain't leaving my mind. I'm saying... I'm not asking about your situation because you're an absent father. I need you to hear me. And get it there. I need you to hear me. I need you to speak to the fathers who are at that point that the mother is so bitter and difficult that they would rather pay child support and not even go around because they don't want to deal with her. How can you speak to that father to overlook those discretions and still fight to be a part of their child's life, even though it's hard dealing with the mom? I like what you said, mom, because the fight don't stop. The fight don't even stop. Speak to the camera. Speak to the men. He's, the fight don't stop. Y'all left and broke up. Well, you thought the fight was going to be easy, hard. Mm. Whatever you thought the fight was going to be, bro, let me tell you one thing right now and here today. When you leave that house and she don't want you there, you got to pick one thing. Right. Your kid mm. or your personal life. Or your pride. Damn the pride. Cause that's what it is, pride. They don't want. They would rather walk away than fight. It's pride. It's pride. pride. It's pride. It's pride. It was a time. The only thing I wanted to do is make sure my daughter was taken care of. Mm -hmm. I'm going back to these Roman noodles and this water. Mm -hmm. that that that's what I'm trying to tell you now. I'm just, just, just trying to be honest with you. My daughter, 14 now. I'm mm -hmm. trying to tell you, it doesn't matter what they feel. At some point in time, if they see your consistency, they gonna come around. But you gotta be consistent. Okay, you gotta fight through it. Understand it's gonna be a fight, and just don't give up. We 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 are. Listen. Of course, you the man. She's a female. She's holding that baby for nine months, but you are the man. Your your presence is still welcome. Your presence is still there. You are still honored as that person, as her kid's father. Yeah. Remember, you still are honored. Okay, remember that. Yeah, don't be a statistic, cause black men statistically are the ones that they say don't want to be a part of their child, that make child's life, that make the children and leave. This is what society wants you to think well, is true, although there are a lot of good you. black fathers. But that's why I would I ask you it. to speak to the fathers that are at a breaking point with these mothers that are bitter. Um, if, because you, if, if you had a breaking point, it's time point, to break some chains. I really feel like if you had really a breaking point, you feel like you can't do anything, yeah. you can't budge, I feel like now the law has to get, in, get into this. Like, Yeah, go to court. We got to go to court. Pay your child support. Put yourself on child support to be there in your kid's life. You got to do something. So now they're okay. only paying with the court they pay. Well, that's up to that man. No, we have a lot of comments after that question. 
That's we have a response. Do you want me to answer? Okay, yeah. but I'm, I promise. The man, the man going to pay with the court pay, but a man that love his kid, he going to pay with the court pay. If that kid needs some shoes, want to go to the grocery Some store, extra. He, he going to pay that extra. Absolutely. Okay. What was the question again, though? I was asking for the fathers that were having to deal with bitter mothers. Uh -huh. And they just decided that, you know what? I'm going to just pay my child support, and when my child get old enough, I'll explain to a letter and just walk away. How do you tell fathers that that's not the answer, basically? Yeah. Like, to stay into them child, to and fight for their children, basically. All right, so I, I, I listen. I feel like the only reason why the fathers actually take that position, the only reason why they feel like it's good, they can take that position, is because they feel like the mama ain't going nowhere, right? The mom is going is a is a is a constant, right? So we have made it. It's like preparing the table for for people, right? You know what I'm saying? And whatever it is that we give in our motherhood, you know what I'm saying? It allowed them to be able to take that position. So you saying? And it just it no. Because a lot of people don't want to talk about what needs to be talked about. Well, I'm just asking. You, so you saying the mother mm -hmm. always gonna, that the man think the mother always gonna be there no matter what? I mean, when he realized that she's a constant, right? Okay. And that from okay. hell to high water about about my kids. You know what I'm saying? So you know, my man going nowhere. My man going nowhere. My man's gonna be consistent. Right. I do believe that the dude who does a certain amount, but they gonna check out in another area. They, they they believe, I believe that they love the kid and they have allowed the majority of every everything else to come from the mother because they know that the mother is going to do whatever it is that they feel like they, the mother needs to do to make sure that the kid is straight. I, I, now, but, I'm not saying it's okay, but nah, I'm going to come from another direction. But this anyway. is somebody fighting to be there. Not even that the mother's there, but they're fighting to be there. But you know when you go around the mom. You saying that the mother has made it difficult? Yeah, when the when they go to and they want to be okay. present. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Your question, oh. yeah, and the oh. mother is constantly. You I ain't gonna see them, and you you ain't doing this, and you and so they're fighting oh. and they're top, so they don't checked out. You know what I mean? Every time I come over here, I got to deal with her. I'm just not dealing anymore. Absolutely, and and and, and I, that's that's to the mothers, right? This, this yeah. conversation is to the mothers. Your answer. Put to your the mothers. feelings in your pocket. Yeah. Hear me what I say. Mm -hmm. Put your feelings in the pocket. And the only reason why I'm telling you to put your feelings in your pocket, I'm not invalidating your feelings, and I'm not trying to say, hey, your motherfucking feelings don't matter. Because right. obviously you still feel a certain type of way about how this person interacted with you, whatever that interaction may be. But the reason why I would ask you to place your feelings in your pocket is because you love the kid, mm -hmm. right? You want the best for your kid, right? right? So all that negativity and that pushing away, those things actually have an effect. And I'm going to show you what some of these effects could possibly be. Because this is some of an absent present father. You know what I'm saying? Right. That, that your actions, that the consequences and repercussions follow behind. Oof. Okay. Put them in your pocket. Dookie said he would never give up. The Joe Jackson sh show said, yeah. I let my son work through a cry for the first time. And it, and out... And it brought us closer in regards to the tough love comment. Mm -hmm. um, my daddy gave up. Oh, Dookie said, my dad gave yeah. up on me. I threatened to fight him. He tightened up. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it takes, cuz. Hey, if y'all get the show said, let me finish. Dookie, 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 Put up with more, and I and I and I definitely do believe that. Yeah. Um, Dookie said, "Um, no, black men are." I'm being petty. Oh, don't be doing. Do <laughs> don't do do. I'm being petty. And Dookie me. said, "Um, I just picked up my boys, finna drop them off to Tasha right now." <laughs> <laughs> if you don't get your behind, I'm my comment. Tasha said, hey. "Suckers," and then Dookie said, "If Tasha. you wait until That's they are, doctor. um, they are old, too much damage <laughs> is done by then." Said, last comment. He said, did a clarification. He basically said, if you wait until the kids get older, it's already too much damage done to the kids. 
Um, which is why I asked the question so that Alvin can speak to the parent, to the fathers on not giving up and Tanya speak to the mothers on swallowing their pride, letting their feelings be put in their pockets. Absolutely. And if you're going through a struggle, I know that at one point my father and my mother didn't get along because of how they got, you know, the separation with Bridget. And they, my dad, because he wanted to be present, mm -hmm. went around my mom and contacted my grandmother gotcha. who who made it so that oh, we yeah, could, who advocated in the middle. So if you can't deal with the mother, find an advocate, find a sister, an aunt, a mom, the grandparents, yeah, so that you can option. still be present. Yeah. Because a lot of them can shut that mom down. Mm -hmm. Right. You see what I'm saying? So you have to and find a way. And even if they can't, if we can go ahead and take it. Shout time. out to Brother Alvin is what Dookie said. Well, listen. Been Come on now, Alvin. You give a lot of people. Come on now. <laughs> I got, I gotta, I have to. Why should we be shot? Too, we can't just be shot. <laughs> Duke Alvin, little lady, might be part of the eating booty game too. Y'all might need to link up. Y'all, how do you eat booty? You eat a little booty? Shot. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no answer is the an answer. <laughs> hey, listen. He out here, ladies. <laughs> he out here. Y'all better come get him. Listen, let me talk Come to these. Get up. Let me talk. I want to I wanna talk to the fathers. Okay. If there's any question you want to ask me, please do ask me. I'm going to give you from my perspective of growing up and understanding how to be there for mine. Yes. Um, but Jennifer, he, did he say, what was that question again? What did he say? No, what he said was if you wait until the child is older, uh -huh. too much damage is already done by him. Yes, yes. Sometimes, sometimes uh, we say this at my job. Uh person wants to be a recruiter. Why are you recruiting already? Mm -hmm. so, sometimes you got to take the initiative to do these things before you want to do them, right? So you got to take these initiatives to do it. Is it hard? Man, it's hard. It's hard. Bro, I don't sit, I, I don't I don't went home from work, worked all day. My daughter called me and said, Daddy, I need help with homework. God don't matter. <laughs> you need help with homework? Yes. She in about fifth, sixth grade. I gotta go get her. Are you smarter than a fifth grade? Listen, go do the homework early. <laughs> I don't go to sleep till ten. I wanna go to sleep. I wanna just lay down, not that I wanna sleep. I just wanna be laying down. Right. I gotta do fifth grade homework. Mm -hmm. Bro, I'm blow. I'm beyond blow. <laughs> right? But I did it. Mm -hmm. And I did it because my passion for her, at the end of the day, it ain't about my life no more. Mm -hmm. I know if I take care of her, God gonna bless me, you know what I'm saying, to continue taking care of her. So I had to understand that. I had to trust the process too as well. Oh, come on now. You know, but at the end of the day, man, it's, bro, I, listen, it's tough. It's tough for us. You so, never too far gone. I don't, I don't believe in too far gone. I understand yeah. what people mean when they make the comment. Mm -hmm. But I'm just a person who just don't give up. And and if I have people who are... Because not only do... You know what I'm saying? I, I stay true to me, right? So if I don't believe that it's okay, I don't think it's ever okay to give up. Because it's always... It's, it's for what, right? So I'm going to always encourage mine to keep it moving, right? And even if you were in my presence... And I hear a conversation about you even, you know what I'm saying, motioning to give up. You just don't get it from me. Because I just feel like it's my responsibility because you done put me, you know what I'm saying, right. it, it, you done right. gave me access. Right? So I don't think it's ever, ever a time where it's too far gone. Well, I do know it's easy to give up. Right. But it's so hard. It's so hard to keep going knowing you ain't getting no reward, homeboy. It's a lot more work, but it is what it is. The reward you're going to get is that your kid mentally mm. is stable. Mm. You want mental stable? You want, you want your kid to be mentally stable? Mm -hmm. Be there for them, okay? And I'm talking to the men. Just be there for them the best you can be. If it's monetary, if it's uh, uh, mentally, whatever, just be there for them. Yeah. Yeah, I just think it's selfish. I think for the person who has that mindset... It's selfish. And I know you may not like my comment, but it's definitely teetering selfish, right? Because you're at your end. You being at your end has allowed your your, your mouth to speak those words. Right, 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 right? right? right. So push forward. You know what I'm saying? Dig deep. Dig deep. You know what I'm saying? Go to outside sources. 
it's never too late, baby. Is what I'm saying. So some of the things as far as to how it affects, you know what I'm saying, of an absent present father, right? And I just want to talk a little bit about my experience before I go about some of the, the effects that it can have on a kid, right? Because when I say that the ex was okay, you know what I'm saying, he was, he was good at being a father, he was good at being a husband, you know what I'm saying, it's, cause we, but nevertheless, we all slack in some right, area, right, even right, myself, right? right? But when you talk about me today, we talk about absent present fathers, right? I do too. <laughs> <laughs> right? So, it's like Alvin had mentioned, he was like, listen, I made a choice. Listen, you got to make a in choice. other words, you have prioritized the monetary. Right? He prioritized the monetary, but he also prioritized it in a way where he can balance it. I don't know if it's well balanced, but you have also made sure that you're present. Hear me what I said. You're still present. Excellent. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's teetering. So maybe, maybe, maybe my ex may have fell into this okay. category. Monetary. Right. I'm, I'm, because I'm what they up. do, what they, what, what he did, in my experience, is he, he's a hard worker. Listen, and when you hear me when I say, even though he's an ex, you will never hear me uh, say nothing bad about him. For what? Even if we had bad experiences, it's none of your business, right? Right? You know what I'm saying? I'm never going to lie to nobody else to speak a certain type of way about him because he's not only still my kid's father, the history that we had, it just is what it is. There's no need to bother, no need to tamper with it because you can't remove it, right? It just mm -hmm. is what it is, right? But when it came to him, he was a hard worker. He was a hard worker. And on his job, he was recognized for it. Right. He was recommended. It was quality, top-notch work. And then he also had a side business because, you know, now he's in to railroad and what I give it company okay. names, right? Okay. But he came from, he had an electrical background. Oh, wow. So what he did was he always did side work in the electrical hmm. field. Okay. Okay. But in that, you know what I'm saying, was definitely good money, right? But he also, like, if you ain't had no money, he was like, man, come on, man. Come on over here and do the side job with me. You ain't got no experience, he gonna train you from top to bottom. You know what that means? No. Train you from top to bottom. And even the first day, you ain't ready to do much. You still get 50, 50. <laughs> but guess what though? Uh-uh, Alvin. Mm. So what he does, but he keeps being patient with you. Mm -hmm. He gonna teach you, and then now we can go out here and do job after job after job after job. And now I'm gonna train you to give quality the same amount, the quality level that I give. Mm. But when it comes to his kids, mm. he tried. But you know what I'm saying? When it comes to the kids, what I notice is that we hold our kids to a higher standard, right? So what means is that we kind of want them jokers to function like we function. So if I pick up quick, I'm going to need you to pick up quick. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to need you to learn quick what I learned visually, what I learned, you know what I'm saying, by paper, whatever. He wanted his kids to be more like him. And when they weren't on that level, then he'd be like, I'm going to take them when they get a little older. Well, that's that, that comes a fact when you should... When they're younger, like I did my daughter, uh -huh. I would let her go through a situation before I reacted first. I let her go through it and see how she was going to handle it. Uh-huh. But did you ever come into the drama with I don't see how she going to handle it. If I feel like she handled it great, I ain't saying nothing. But if I felt like she didn't handle it right, then I would say something. That's not kind of the same. Ain't one of the same, Alvin. Is you listening? I'm 100%. You ain't listening. Because I say it. <laughs> <laughs> Are you listening, Jennifer? Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> One thing about my friends is that we're gonna be honest, and and sometimes we ain't gonna appreciate each other's honesty because I don't appreciate that their response. But nevertheless, if I'm asking you to take your kids because your kids need to learn this electrical trade so that we can make whatever, whatever, whatever what, what? out of it, right? Hold on, Adam, let me because you weren't listening the first well, I time. I got your question, but now you're talking electrical trade. You're talking about they nineteen, eighteen. No, they're that, they're that now. Well, they ain't even that. They passed that now. I'm talking about when they they growing up. Okay. As a man, we instill in certain things. In Correct. Them so they can so, understand. Okay. Better. So if I, taught, if I told you, to, if, I done, if I started this plea at six. Okay. You said, I need them to be a little older. Okay. So now we come back around the table at 10. Okay. God damn it. Try it again. Yeah, Motherfuckers getting on my nerves. Still understand. They ain't picking up quick enough. I'm going to come back. Now I'm coming back here at 13. God damn it, they still that way I did, didn't it be? Now we back here at 15. Now, nigga, this 10 
seen that shit, nigga, these niggas started getting straight. You gotta go talk in the coma. Exactly, but um, but the point is, you know what I'm saying? Because I'm not here to give them point. You know what I'm saying? But I'm just saying it was the, you know what I'm saying, not taking heed to it. Right. You know what I'm saying? So now you, now when you should have paid attention right. and did it then, now you gotta play catch up. I'm with you. I'm with you. Because he's still active. Don't get it twisted. Because there's a father that loved and he was present. He was just absent in some areas. Because I do believe all of the things that I just listed out, you know what I'm saying, as far as the signs of an absent present father, right. I believe that present, active present fathers more or less what you are can still be in that category with maybe one or maybe two things which gotcha. means that you're not perfect right? Gotcha. Gotcha. But you ain't falling at all when you got down on numbers, right? So you just had maybe a number or two on numbers. That's what I just said. It's, it's always, you're always trying to perfect. You're always trying to be better as a man. So you got to better yourself that way you can help your kid and so forth, right? So you are trying to perfect not, not even perfect, you're trying to be better. Absolutely. Absolutely. And just push past that. It's just like, I hate doing math. I'm good at it. But if I got to teach you how to do it, it's a problem. Especially when you ain't paying attention. <laughs> so if I got to teach your kid, I'm just saying, so if I got to teach my kids, you will come in there, it sounds like it's child abuse. You know what I'm saying? I know goddamn well you don't think no two plus two equals sex. You know what I'm saying? That's I mean, easy, I'm, that's I'm, easy then. I'm, I'm hot. No, that's she, simple. But she, I just had to make she sure. She coming at door with algebra? <laughs> household. It took me a while to understand, but I had to make sure I made a bigger impact to understand. I had, it's just for me. Right. And that's, oh, that's, that's, that's deep. It is. It is. I agree. And um, I don't think people realize how deep that is, though, Alvin. You know what I'm saying? Just without trying to expound on it even more, it is deep, right? Mm -hmm. And it said, assuming everything is your fault. Yeah. Clinging to relationships. Fearing meaningful intimacy, mm. right? Because now when you come over here with the one-on-one, -on -one, you ain't really taking full advantage of this one-on-one. -on -one. You ain't making it meaningful. Right. You, come you know to, what I'm saying? Right. Correct. So now I don't, you know what I'm saying? I feel things that mean, that's meaningful, in other words, right? Having difficulty with other people's emotions. Mm. Struggling with authority figures. Overcompensating in the way you parent. Oh Lord! I find that big, that's a big one. It's a Overcompensating. Big <laughs> and then the last one is being a perfectionist. We're well, not gonna be perfectionist. I, 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 I'm not gonna be perfect, y'all. Again, you you asked me how long did it take to uh, balance life. Mm -hmm. I'm still trying to figure it out. Yeah, it was another question that I had asked you that I had, it had slipped my mind. When I asked you what put you in that mind frame, what it reminds me of, I remember when my son, because I'm now a grandmother. Okay. Right? I remember the two. Oh, okay, okay. 
beautiful grandmotherhood right. is different from parenthood, right? But nevertheless, it's a blessing. Love those babies. Right. right. Ooh, to life, right? Because I'm going to use the death, right? But I remember when um, the um, Ari, because that's my, that's my baby, whether her and my sons marry and stay together forever, she will always be dear to me, right? Mm. Um, and that's the mother of my grandbabies. But nevertheless, I remember before she had the kids because they were young. Okay. And I was I was adamant, like was telling my ex, like I think that she should move here, right? And I mean, cause what did happen to that? Because clearly they was fucking even when we had was trying to prevent them from fucking, right? But nevertheless, <laughs> fast forward, they already did it, and now the baby is gonna be here. Right. So I felt like she needed to be in the home. But the reason why I felt like she needed to be in the home is because I feel like that time when the baby is here is hella important. Hmm. Right. And it's not only for the mother, like but that. I'm talking about my son. So about like those first couple of months, or whatever. Absolutely, just yes, because it's bonding time. Okay. Because now I'm the mother, right? I'm a mother, and this is my mama. So, right. you know what I'm saying? But you know what I'm saying? The daddy mama is on that position. Right. So, you know, it's only that mama side. Right. So, now I'm on the opposite side because my, my daughter ain't pregnant. Mm -hmm. It's my son that had a baby, okay. right? So, now I'm on the outskirts. Ooh. So, I'm going to make sure, that's, you know. It's a little different. Right. So, not only do I not only don't want you to push me out. Right? Because I want to be very present as a grandmother. Right. But I also, more importantly, I want you to give my son the bonding time mm -hmm. that he needs. Because if he get it now, ain't nobody mm -hmm. going to be able to take it away. You know what I'm saying? Give him that now. Don't so matter important. whether you or him get on bad terms. So but whatever that brings about, he already got that bond. So important. He's gonna, it's going to stay there. You know what I'm saying? Whatever it is, he's going to make sure that the kid is right. taken care right. of. Right. So that's why I asked you that question. Mm -hmm. What got you there? What gave you the, what, kept, what, what, what motivated you? What gave you that drive to be like, I don't care what comes, even though you, you picked the lane, what gave you, what put you there? Did you I, get the bond in time? I think, I, yeah, I think my, honestly, I think uh, my dad and I live in the same household and he, him giving me the understanding, mm -hmm. you know, he gave me the understanding. Like he would, he would come get us um, every other weekend, you mm -hmm. know. Because back then, mm -hmm. and I can't speak. I'm not sure if they were on papers. Back then, they didn't want me. Yeah, not hot at all. Oh, okay, yeah, <laughs> but at the end of the day, man, I just felt like I didn't want my daughter feeling have no empty space in her. Yeah, you know, like yeah. I was just, I was just <laughs> so involved from day one. Yeah. I knew, like, listen, I'm having a daughter. No matter what the situation was, I'm just gonna be there. You know. So what did it feel like when you, when that that kid came? You have to such and such push that guy down on baby out. Oh, and I was there. I was in the room. Right. So it didn't create in that moment. It didn't come about in that moment. Because that, well, because that's that, a different experience between your dad. Right. 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 So at that moment, I was there when she was born. I was literally there. Yeah. Right. I was physically there with everything. So. Uh -huh. Um. At the end of the day, I'm like, I'm just going to be here. Mm -hmm. No matter what the case is. And in my mind at the time, I didn't think anything would go wrong with me and her mom. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I thought everything would be good. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, a life came. Obstacles came. And life came. Yeah. <laughs> so, like, you know, you got to make a decision. And you still have to be there. Like, no matter what. Like, no matter what, as a man, you have to still provide. You got to still be there emotionally, monetarily-wise. You have to be there, and if you feel like you don't have to be there, you're wrong. You must that you 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 sadly mistaken about what it is to be a man. Okay, at the end of the day, it's nothing to do with her, nothing to do with Jennifer, no other woman. It's about yourself as a man. What you want? Talk to me. <laughs> what you want? All right, seriously, what you want? Mm -hmm. And for the guys, I was asking a question earlier about if the mama just don't want him and all this. Listen, I hate that you're going through that, but you just can't give up, man. Can't give up. If you want to be blessed in life and continue your blessing, and God pole bolts you into a new career and, and, and takes care of you. Did you say cobalt or catapults you? Pole bolt. Like you know, oh, provoke. Yeah, it's the lips. No, polo. Pole bolt. Yeah, you're talking about my lips. See that? That's what I'm talking about earlier, man. Yeah, because that sounded totally if, different. If you want God to put you in. Right, right, right. 
need. Hey, what do you mean? You want God to put you in a better situation and keep blessing you? Take care of that kid. That's all I got to tell you. It's going to be hard. You're going to cry at night sometimes. You want to punch the wall. You want to jump off the ceiling. But you better take care of that kid. I'm, I promise you that. You can jump off the ceiling. Make sure you got life insurance for it before you jump off. Okay? Hey, man, how we doing? Yeah. It's nice to hear. It's refreshing. And it's nice to hear from the male perspective. Right, right. And, and that's just me. Kudos to you, Abby. For real. Like, mm-hmm. I really, I got much respect for you. Right. And, um, again, it's refreshing to hear from a father who is currently in that position of an active dad and with the don't give up spirit. Right, right. what I'm saying? Right. Because we don't hear about it or not. You know what I'm saying? Because we live in this space. The mother, the, I, well, me as a mother, because I'm going to speak for me, me as a mother, it's, even though I understand that I may coddle them and, I, and it's tough, and it's times where I need to give tough love, where I may make you feel as though that I ain't got your back, you know what I'm saying? But nevertheless, I'm, I, I, I'm not checking out until I check out. Right, right. You know what I'm saying? Right, right. I'm not checking out until I check out. So when I hear it from a male's perspective, it's refreshing. It's appreciated. I appreciate that, but it's easy to give, it's easy to give up. <laughs> <laughs> no, dude, it's, it's, don't take it. Don't take it oh, back. Oh, 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 no, I, I ain't taking it back. What I'm saying is, it's just so easy to stop doing, but it's harder to keep going, right? You just gotta keep going, and I and I chose to keep going to keep going. Yeah, that was just my choice. You know, called that. I don't really think we got a choice in that. Nevertheless, yeah, you just want to experience. You know what I'm saying? He allowed you to feel the physical want to give up, but he was like, "Ah, I'm just playing with you. I just want you." We know, I was raised. I was raised by a grandmother, and granddad that was Pentecostal, and my mom. So we had we had to go to church Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, and Sunday. I can relate. In my adulthood, right? But we couldn't get ready to wrap this thing up. Alvin, it was an excellent episode. Much needed. Well, I really appreciate uh, Tanya and Jennifer inviting me to Tell us about some dang in the lips. The lips. Tasha, it's the lips for me. I haven't been talking about your lips, sir. And Tasha said, nope, Jennifer doing just fine. I keep it up, Jen. <laughs> That's the <girl. laughs> It's all good. I mean, you ain't gonna say nothing about people talking about your lips? It's a blessing and a curse. What? Yeah, I can see that being true. That's a whole other subject. I don't think that curse at all. Well, what I will say is this right here. I don't see him as a curse, but I had to grow into them. Because mm-hmm. at one point in time, <laughs> you know. I'm super had, coolers. I had to grow up, yeah. <laughs> but he's coming. See, there she go. Jennifer called me super coolers. Because they called me super coolers in high school. Yeah, super coolers. That's it. Looking like Jay-Z over here with them super coolers. <laughs> But Jay-Z working with a, with, a, with, a, with a monster right now, in other words. Right. You know what I'm saying? One of the, so they say, one of the top females in the game. I mean, he is. He's his his lips thing. working for him, in other words. He's one of the top females in the game, and he still stepped out. It don't matter who lips he ain't is, sa- where The lip size ain't changed. There they go. There they go. Hello. It don't matter who he is, where he is. Hey, you, you done stepped what out. What you say, from the trap house to the what? To the white house. <laughs> <laughs> well, they asked him. I'm just letting you know I had to grow into him. Look, yeah. I'm just going, because I know I got some females out there that be about that life. Well, what can your lips do, Alvin? <laughs> no, I don't Alvin know about that. Hey, I'm, listen. <laughs> <laughs> my name is Alvin Cummins, a.k.a. from Florida. Not the Cummins. A.k.a. Lyman High School. Via, Always known as Lyman High School. Via, known as via Savannah, Georgia. Via Savannah, Georgia. Yeah, it is. Right there. <laughs> okay. Yeah, you know I'm saying I'm here to help. Y'all, don't fall, don't fall in any trap. Just be you. <laughs> listen, all right. So we're gonna wrap this thing up. Get listen. I, I I truly appreciate you. Actually, this is an honor for me. I really yeah. this topic was very dear to me when you told me about it. Yeah. Like three months ago. <laughs> And, yeah, because uh, it's been a long time coming, sir. Right. Well, you know, I had a trip. Tell them it ain't my fault. It ain't your fault. Thank you. Please and thank you. But I had a trip that <laughs> was planned on the weekend, then some other things came up, but we managed to make it happen, and I'm really excited that we were able to make it happen. Absolutely. Uh, I want to tell you all, save the question for part two that's coming up <laughs> in July. 
Okay. It's not about the same subject though, right? It ain't about the same subject, but we gonna we gonna we gonna keep it relative. Okay. Okay. Keep he ain't told me shit, but he told y'all everything. Well, a sneak peek. Damn, but I'm in for the shit. You know what I'm saying? Because it's talk your shit. Right. <laughs> right. But I do want to thank you so much, Adam, for not only your willingness mm. to do the episode, mm. but also I just want to, because I know Father's, Father's Day is coming up and mm. y'all jokers scream to the rooftop. You know mm. what I'm saying? That is not recognized as how we recognize Mother's Day. I got you. You know what I'm saying? And and, and just because we have a little bit of history, right? Mm-hmm. But I, I, I know you enough mm-hmm. to know that you are a great dad. I appreciate that. So I do want to take this time to tell you thank you for your fatherhood. Absolutely, thank you. Thank you for inviting me. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I appreciate your conversation that you brought to the platform. And I'll um, be able to, to, to chop it up with, with you know what I'm saying? <laughs> From the yeah. channel to the way, I was like my dear best friend like to say. But we're going to go ahead and wrap it up. Y'all already know I appreciate everybody who tuned in and typed on that keyboard so that that director back there, my business manager, <laughs> and where many is, right? right? Can incorporate those comments. But until next time, and y'all remember I got to hit the road. I'm going to do this help at the back. Wrap yeah. it up, Jennifer. Good time. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna do our hair because I'm no longer a hairdresser. We can't. But do she she tried to make me put that hat on. No, because I'm gonna say what I need to say. Cause you don't want me to say it. No, out. Bye. Nine off. <laughs> off Jennifer. Look, Jennifer, you off. Log out and now. Hit me.